effects and adaptations of anti-Semitism. Today's presentation is going to be about um, showing what those adaptations of two hatred have in common. And this is why it is um, about the worldview core of, or the core of this worldview, to then be able to show how this basic conviction um, that um, underlies all of the left and right wing adaptations of two hatred and um, how they show this anti-Semitism. On the 16th of April, we've got um, a presentation by Monika Schwarz-Friesel. Um, she um, talks about this metaphor of anti-Semitism as a chameleon. She came up with that. Um, anti-Semitism is a chameleon. It changes its color and adapts to its social and political environment. Its cognitive and emotional core, however, remains the same. Uh, as I said, this citation is from Monika Schwarz-Friesel. Um, she will give a presentation on the 16th. On the 16th. Uh, for me, it's mostly about the, describing this worldview core. Unfortunately, you cannot do it in great detail because we only have 30 minutes, but I'm um, trying to show you as much as possible in that time and talk about uh, very current cases of anti-Semitism at the moment. Um, for instance, um, what happened in Berlin or in London a few weeks ago, so that we can see how this these basic um, ideas um, are expressed. First of all, you have to understand that with anti-Semitism, um, and people who are experienced in that topic usually know that, but in gen when people generally talk about it, people often forget it, that anti-Semitism is actually a worldview. It's not just a reflex uh, to discriminate um, against people who you consider different or less worthy or whatever, or ha somehow belong to another group. Um, it's a psychological um Patterns also play a role in anti-Semitism, but it cannot be anti-Semitism cannot be reduced to that. With anti-Semitism, it's mostly about a world view. So it means it is a ideological a template um, for people to interpret reality. And first of all, I'd like to start uh, talking about what the core of this worldview is before then moving on to uh, current cases, um, talking about things that just happened a few days ago uh, during demonstrations in Berlin or London and so on. I think a good uh, point to approach is to understand um, the, the core of anti-Semitism, the anti-Semitism worldview. It, are um, these conspiracy fantasies from the protocol of the wise man of Sion. Some might have, a few might have already heard about it, and some might also know that this fantasy, um, this conspiracy fantasy, um, which was developed in Russia in the 20th century, but then translated to many different languages. And here we can t see two, um, two illustrations in French and in Spanish I've chosen here because they uh, represent the core idea of this conspiracy idea um, quite well. Um, as you can see on the French one, we have um, a, a person that's supposed to represent a stereotypical Jew um, who's shown as an evil creature who uh, puts his fingers into this world. So Jews are seen as oppressors, as dominators of this world, as an evil oppressors. Um, the Jew, as you can see here at the bottom of the picture, you can see dead people. So alleged uh, victims of uh, this evil domination. So we can see uh, the two core elements of anti-Semitism. One, it is that Jews are um, seen as evil or as um, powerful, and they are to blame for everything bad in this world. And this is an essential point. I really want to emphasize this. Um, the anti-Semitism um, is different from Semit from racism that we saw during colonial times. Racism from colonial times in its conventional sense is an ideology um, that does not justify. Um, they just say that uh, 
uh, black people are worth less. That's why we're allowed to enslave them, to occupy the country, uh, to exploit um, them for the resources. So there's a justification for political oppression or exploitation uh, by uh, um, declaring the people that are being exploited to be w less worthy. But anti-Semitism says, and I think it's very important um, to know it's the actual opposite. Anti-Semites uh, do not consider themselves uh, oppressors or someone who discriminates. They see themselves as uh, oppressed as vi and as victims. They consider themselves as someone who um, wants to um, amount to paint themselves and get away from a uh, from a Jewish traditional Jewish domination. So this word emancipation is often used in uh, leftist um, discourse. The, the left uh, all, often um, presents themselves as fighters, as helpers. Um, but actually, this the it is the core of anti-Semitism that had always been um, like that. The self uh, representation um, of anti-Semites as uh, oppressed people who do not want to discriminate against anyone, um, who just want to uh, get out of this oppression and they want to fight for um, social justice and against oppression. And that's also what we can see on the next slide. And because we do not have uh, a lot of uh, time, I can't talk about everything we see here, but you can see on the right hand side, it's an emphasis from the Stürmer, this um, anti-Semit, this um, infamous anti-Semit, the um, um, magazine from Jürgen Streicher during uh, National Socialist Times. Um, and there's also this metaphor about a Jewish uh, world domination, um, which is uh, uh, shown here as a parasite, as a huge um, creature that um, crawls across the entire world. And here I've got uh, one uh, paragraph that I highlighted in yellow from this article. Uh, so for those who can uh, see at the screen, it says that uh, Jewish people have um, been told by their God um, how to um, live this parasite life, but also to enslave non-Jewish um, people. And anti-Semites see themselves as slaves and those who want to um, get out of this hallucinated um, slavery uh, that they um, experience. So this is something that has always been uh, a part of the of anti-Semitism. So that's one thing. This difference uh, uh, to uh, racism because people consider themselves victims, and the other part is the uh, measurement apart from the imagination that Jewish people are considered that they are considered evil or powerful. And that's something that resists um, and through our different political um, situations. And, and it was adapted to different moral um, values because what's considered good or bad changes. But when you look at this um, creature here and you look at its eyes, you can see that this creature um, it could, uh, is being blamed for communism, but also for fascism at the same time. We don't have the time to look at um, the background and why this is presented like this, but um, despite the fact that it's a very interesting topic, but you can see that um, it is very easy to adapt um, this image. It is um, it can be used for anti-capitalists, for uh, communists, um, and actually it says in the protocol of the uh, White Man of CN, um they talk about and they it is just, it was uh, invented by the um uh, the anti communists in russia uh, who blamed the jews for communism um and later in the soviet union the jews were blamed for anti-communism later on as well. So that is a topic that you could technically talk about in greater detail, but I just want to explain this to show how adaptable this I the idea is. It's a channel um, idea, that, um, but that keeps being adopted to different situations. But um, 
it can be uh, projected to the uh, different situations in this world. But this basic idea of um, a Jewish world conspiracy remains the same, but there's still adaptations, as we can see here on the next slide. And I hope you can uh, hear the audio as well. So it's, uh, it's very silent, but it says something about oppression since 1945. And unfortunately, was everyone able to hear the video? Did you hear that? I can't unfortunately see anyone on the screen. Can everyone tell me um, if they heard something? I can only see uh, back screens. Uh, if I don't get any feedback, uh, I just assume that oh, I can actually uh, only see myself on the slides. I can't see anyone's reaction. But I just assume that you heard the audio, right? I didn't you hear anything. Was it okay? Great. Um, no, we could not hear it, but if you couldn't play it back for us, we'll, we'll try again. So one or two, play it back again. You weren't able to hear it. Do you want me to play it again? A world domination, oppression of all people and they've been trying to do that since 1945 who who does that well the Jewish people they're crazy that's always so in the in case you weren't able to, to uh, hear it I've got the dialogue here um, I've written out the dialogue here uh, there's a journalist from the Bild um, newspaper on the and he did this interview on the uh, 26th of um, March um, during a demonstration of uh, people who deny uh, corona. And um, he, he has picked up this idea of um, the Jewish world conspiracy and adapted it to the reality of the corona pandemic. And you could say, well, maybe he was... Um, maybe just an isolated case and he doesn't represent what most people think but unfortunately that's not the case when you look at the survey uh, we can see that this clearly isn't the case we've got two that two figures here that we're going i'm going to talk about at the end of the um presentation but let's look at the dark blue columns here um people were asked during a so whether they would agree to the statement that uh, jewish people have too much influence in our country um, it, this is the religious monitor by Infos um, that was um, done for Bethlesman, a very net renowned survey institute. And as we can see here, that in Germany, this um, statement, 21% um, agreed to it. In Poland, it's 29%, and Spain's 26%. So roughly a, full, a quarter of uh, the people in Europe share a, a this sentiment or this feeling or uh, view that um, is based in this anti-Semitic conspiracy myth. And we can see how um, this worldview still persists today. So I've showed you the corona denier um, just to illustrate how this old myth of Jewish uh, world conspiracy st still remains and how it is adapted to uh, reality or current reality. But this process of um, adaptation, if you remember the uh, metaphor about the chameleon, um, it has uh, two, two aspects. On one hand side, there's the projection uh, to political situation, but also there's a um, terminological adaptation. This is what I want to show here. Let's look at the next video. The video's in English. Oh. 
I'm not going to ask you if you heard or not, because otherwise we'll uh, um, take up too much time. But I've uh, written down the most important sentence here, David Ayek a previous um, sports reporter from the uh, British Channel BBC who once uh, decided to change his career and decided to become a conspiracy theorist. He um, he said, uh, you can't really see it on the video, uh, but he's talking to a lot of people, quite a big audience. Um, he's quite popular. He writes books that are being uh, sold and bought, and he talks about the Rothschild Zionism as a secret society that was uh, be, I was created in order to manipulate society and to manipulate this, uh, individual countries. So we have uh, this myth about um, Jewish uh, conspiracy. Not this time. It's not about Jews and child, but about uh, Rothschild. Um, so it is a a adapt a terminal adaptation you don't talk about uh, Jews but you changed change to what you're talking about but um the this uh, anti sionism uh, it is now called we've got this uh, this classic uh, anti semitic ideas um that is still here but sounds more politically correct usually i talk about this in greater detail but we don't have time uh, to do so today but the idea of and or the term of anti semitism um from was created in the 19th century, but the term of anti-Semitism um, was coined uh, by people that considered themselves progressive, um, who say, "Well, we don't have anything to do with true hatred. We are we don't hate uh, Jews. We are anti-Semites." Um, actually, it was a term back in the day. Anti-Semitism was something that uh, people were proud uh, to be. There was an anti-Semitic meeting in Berlin. Um, these classic ideas of a Jewish uh, uh, world domination, um, they are still being used, but under a different term, uh, this term of anti-Semitism. And on the next slide, we can see how these uh, types of adaptation, the projection um, to the uh, COVID pandemic, um, Zionism and Israel, um, how um, this is com was combined, um, that um, Israel is the same as Corona. Um, that was an image that was spread uh, during a Twitter campaign with the name uh, Co COVID-48, um, 1948 was the year Israel was founded. So um, um, Israel and Corona are seen as the same thing. Um, Israel is considered a symbol of the um, Corona pandemic. So we can see the worldview here that Jewish people are to be blamed uh, for those bad things. And we can see the adaption here. That's this chameleon of anti-Semitism. Uh, that adapts to the changing realities. And this is exactly what we can see here as well. Uh, this is an image from a uh, uh, weekend, um, a few weeks ago. It was a demonstration, a pro-Palestine uh, demonstration um, in London um, that was supposed to uh, support uh, people who suffer from the war uh, in Gaza. Um, and this happened about a week ago. Here we can see on this pro-Palestine uh, demonstration a sign um, on the right hand side. Uh, we can see the German translation. Those who can, um, those who speak English uh, can read the sign on the right, on the left hand side. Um, wake up, our media, TV, radio and government are controlled by CNS, CNS are ruthless, but and heartless. I think here it becomes very evident that the so-called, well, actually we can see that the uh, Israel-related um, anti-Zionism um, wasn't, isn't rooted in the near Middle East conflict. Uh, this Middle East conflict is just like the corona pandemic or any event worldwide. It's just a protection surface for anti-Semitism. So it means that there's always this idea that um, that anti-Semitism 
anti-Semitism comes from the conflict, but that's not the case. These classical conspiracy theories are projected onto this conflict or uh, the con corona pandemic. And I can give you an example of what's even more current. There was a, another demonstration, you can see it um, as well, I've, last Thursday uh, in uh, Berlin in front of the Freie Universität. Okay, so there's no audio, but the subtitle says that Zionists are fascists and are, um, that someone states that they don't want to talk to uh, Zionists. Um, so they said that they are communist uh, group and they fight uh, for those who are oppressed, the Palestinians that are oppressed. Um, in the region of God. Okay, so someone told me that they, uh, they didn't hear the sound. You can't hear anything. You can't hear anything. Okay, so um, I cannot um, solve the technical technological problem here, but I can uh, give you a summary of what we heard. Um, they, we heard Zionists are fascists, and then we heard a, a speech from an activist, um, a representative from the um, FU Berlin, who said that the mass protests um, around the world showed that uh, fighting um, the Palestinians fight against imperialism is the fight of all those oppressed. Um, and it's something that was also reflected by the man in the red hat um, who says he's from a communist uh, organization. And what becomes clear here is that it is not about Israel and uh, Palestine. It is about uh, um, projecting um, something onto this conflict. Um, to talk about this uh, agenda of uh, anti-fascism uh, against oppression. So, um, Sinists are um, shown as um, fascists and they're considered uh, um, enemies when fighting imperialism and oppression and fascism. And here, uh, once again, we can see that uh, this is something that happens worldwide. And that's also something that the uh, woman said beforehand and what this man uh, just said. Uh, but once again, we can see uh, this adaptation. Uh, there's this irony here. Um, the In the protocols of the wise men of Sion, it's... Um, that they were created in an anti-communist um, context. Um, the Jews were blamed for anti-communism during the um, um, uh, during the Soviet times. It was the other way around, where they bl were blamed for fascism and imperialism, etc. So uh, they just say that they are to be blamed for a certain bad um, event. Um, every group um, says that Jewish people or uh, Sionists are to be blamed for something that they consider um, something bad that they have to fight. Um, so this um, is the core to uh, what, they, um, what they do. Um, and they just adapt this to... Um, their own um, imagination and their own uh, conviction. It's the exact same thing. Um, also works um, not just on the left um, uh, side of the society, but also on the right side. And that's something we can see here. I think it happened two days ago, uh, the day before yesterday, uh, a demonstration by the NPD, so a neo-Nazi party in Turinga somewhere in Turinga, and here they say yesterday dressed in today Gaza. So you have to say that that this is a uh, right-wing um, right -wing extremist uh, framework. Uh, they, uh, they do not talk about um, a war that was necessary to end um, a terror, but for them it is, um, this bombardment is a crime. And that um, that is a part of a non-legitimized war. 
um they the part of this is the oppression of germany um they think and here you can see we talk about neo uh, nazis who are marching here and they say well yesterday dressed and today uh, gaza genocide so this accusation of genocide um is something that we do not only hear from leftist discourse from uh, palestinian discourse but also about um what we hear from um extremists on the right hand side um this uh, adapting changing the times or um that uh, happens quite often but this uh, this conflict is just a projection surface to um for these um anti-semitic ideas you can see um place cards from the bds movement um they use it um very often and we can actually um see that the uh, BDS uh, movement um, is anti-Semitic. It doesn't just criticize um, Israel. There's a war in uh, the Middle East. There are many reasons for that. There's a um, Israel-Palestine conflict that has different reasons. But um, here you can see um, that the BDS says, this is not war, it's a genocide. And there's a conflict where people uh, die that is rooted or re there's a um in um the ideas in the arabic world um where they say that the uh, that israel shouldn't exist as a state and um the war that uh, was written that is recontextualized and the people who die in this context are not the victims of a war um but seen as the victims of a um targeted genocide so this decontextualization this reinterpretation of reality is uh what where we can see um how these anti-semitic interpretation um, patterns um are uh used and applied to uh, the events uh around the middle east conflict and we already saw when um people talk about um as innocent Jews um, um, who um, engage in genocide, it's not something we only see uh, from uh, people on the left, but also um, we see that um, amongst neo-Nazis as well. Um, here on the left, um, on the side, they also talk about genocide as something from um, that happened in uh, 2021, but that's something that... Uh, um, it was created during the Gaza conflict. This accusation uh, of genocide is something that we do not only hear from leftists um, and in the context of the Gaza war, but also in other um, totally different contexts. Um, so let's move uh, back to the um, right-wing extremists. So I'm just going to show you the video. It has subtitles. What we see here is a... Uh, um, speech by Nick Griffin, the chairman of the right uh, wing party. Um, it was a speech that he gave in the uh, European Parliament, and he blamed Sinis for the for the um, migration to European so societies. So f for um, those uh, right wing extremists, the bad is not. Um, fascism but the migration so this theory of uh, genocide of white people um something that uh, neo-nazis believe in they um also blame the zionists for that um and in that context it, um the zionists are um also shown as a group that engages in genocide Okay, the biggest 
genocide in human history. He talks about the biggest genocide in human history. This genocide um, is allegedly the genocide of a, a white race. This is this um, uh, right wing uh, conspiracy theory, and um, the Sionists are blamed um, for it. So this idea that Sionists engage in genocide is not something that we only see in the Palestinian uh, context. It is a, a template uh, to choose um, Sionists are blamed for crime against humanity um, and they are blamed for whatever some people consider bad or uh, what they want to fight with their political agenda. Um, so um so the, sometimes um they are um against um communists and sometimes they are seen against fascism um so there's exactly something that we can see here um it's from an english uh, web page that's called uh, the anti sionist league they're not uh, that's something I want to emphasize. Um, they do not uh, call themselves anti-Jewish League. They call themselves anti-Sunnist League. But um, they do cons uh, show um, Orthodox, Orthodox Jews, Jews as uh, those to be blamed for uh, migrants uh, fr from um, African countries, from Latin American countries coming to uh, the US or uh, uh, Europe European countries. And um, this is where I want to show how um, there's what, where's the difference between anti-Semitism and um, racism. Um, here, um, the people are shown as less uh, valuable or stupid uh, people. Um, the migrants here um, are pictured that way, but to choose here as someone who orchestrates this and organizes everything here. Um, so they claim that uh, Jewish people are powerful and they're behind all of this. Um, so anti-Semitism. Um, what again? What you can see once again? This uh website is called Anti-Semitist League, and this uh model of uh, ideas is a worldview that is behind uh most um um attacks behind most attacks um, on synagogues in Pittsburgh um, or other cities. And we know that in October 2019, there was an attack on the synagogue in Halle. And here I have a, a short um, a paragraph from the attacker's manifest. Um, he uh, published a manifest um, on the internet. And here it says, um, um, Actually, I wanted to storm a uh, mosque or an Antifa um, meeting um, that are less um, uh, con protected, but um, it, for him it was more important that in the end to kill Jewish uh, people instead because he says that um, they are to be blamed for the migration to Europe, and the only way to win is to uh, to, uh, to remove the head of the Zionist occupied government. So he talks about the uh, Zionist um, government. He uh, talks about the uh, Merkel uh, government, about all those immigrants coming to Germany, and he says that something has to be done against them. And he. Um, uh, and talks about the Zionist occupied uh, governments. So the Jew Jewish people, I've talked uh, for too long already, and I was actually, I actually knew that I wouldn't get to all of the slides, but uh, I think what um, was, we were able to see that uh, these anti-Semitic ideas um, can be adapted to different contexts. Usually I give this presentation for about an hour, but we don't have any time uh, left, and I don't want to, um, I go over time. Um, I I'm just want to show you one last slide. Um, that there are we have anti-Israel demonstrations in London where um, uh, um Jews are represented as uh, the devil. Um, so they that this is um 
something that's really interesting what you don't have time for today um i'm going to come back to this um chameleon and metaphor i hope it got um it was clear that this is a worldview that's something uh that can be adapted to uh the cha changing situations in the world but also something uh, that is um it can be adapted to moral uh frameworks um once again uh, Jews are represented as something, um, somebody evil, um, as someone powerful, but that remains the same. Or what's different is uh, what's considered bad or good in different, um, polit on different political sides. But some want to fight uh, fascism, some want to fight communism. Um, and this is really what I uh, what the changes um it, are the realities um but the the core remains the same that they think that Jewish people are evil um the discourses that are being a, this idea is being adapted to is uh different but the core is always the same um that's what um Monica Schwarz Friesen wanted to show um here with her uh quote and I want to. Uh, uh, end my presentation and give you the possibility to ask questions now. I can't uh, see anyone or hear anything. Is there anyone here? I can see people yeah. now. Um, so can I just um, give, let, okay, I can see Daniel Benami raised his hand. Uh, yeah, I've got a question. Something was a, li a little bit unclear, but it might be because of the translation. I'm not sure. So I I'm not sure if you were saying that anti-Black racism is a different form of racism to anti-Semitism. Or, or uh, I just, I wasn't clear what you were saying, whether you were saying that anti-Black racism and anti-Semitism are different forms of racism, which is which is one argument I think definitely true. Or were, were you saying that anti-Semitism shouldn't be seen as a form of racism, which I think is much more questionable? Because it seems to me anti-Semitism, although it's different from anti-Black racism, is a form of racism.
Not yet, but you can try again. No. I can't see it, no. If you could share your screen again.
Okay, Mark, if we have time for one more question. There's another question in the chat from Alan Brickett, who says, as Dr. Noy Grishel has demonstrated, anti-Semitism is fluid. All claims, myths, libels, et cetera, are, are rarely dispelled before new adaptations of this disease arise. What are some of the strategies that we may employ to confront these erroneous notions? Would you suggest a combination of some type of legal, educational, and interpersonal solutions? Okay, terrific there. I think that's all the time for questions that we may have unless, do you have any other final comments, Mark? Perfect, well, thank Thank you again, Mark. We'll see you all.